live from WTVO Rockford and your home team. Eyewitness News at 6 starts now. Good evening, I'm Mimi Murphy. And I'm Eric Wilson. Two days of storms and heavy rain lead to chaos across the state line. Lightning strikes caused fires and multiple roads are still closed from flooding. Let's head back over to Candace now for the latest. You know, it has been a mess out there over the last couple of days. While some of the creeks and streams were able to withstand some of that heavy rainfall late Saturday night, early Sunday morning, the additional rain that we had out there this morning really pushed them over literally their banks as we had significant flash flooding, not just for a portion of northern Illinois, but for most of northern Illinois as that second round of heavy rain came in. As I mentioned here at the top of the show, we are dry and skies are expected to stay dry. We're actually starting to see some clearing take place from the northwest. This will continue here as we go through the night tonight. While that flash flood warning is no longer in effect, we do have a flood warning for Stevenson County. This is the result of the residual flooding that took place earlier today. So still could be some standing water in some areas outside of the river flooding that is taking place in the creek and stream flooding as well. Now with the creeks and streams draining into some of the local rivers, we do have a flood warning for the Pecatonica River. This at Freeport as that river level has gone up over 15 feet. So we are in moderate flood stage. There is ongoing flooding that has been taking place there uh, just a little under that major flood stage of 16 feet. That warning goes until Thursday morning. It is very well possible that we could actually see that extended. Now there will be a flood warning that goes into effect further downstream along the Pecatonica River. This for Sherland as the river continues to kind of rise over the next couple of days. You see the street flooding, you get the rivers, you get the streams or creeks and streams I should say. Eventually all of that drains into the river. So a couple days after we have that major rainfall, you start to see that go up. So folks in the Sherland area, heads up or anywhere along that Pecatonica River there in Winnebago County, we could see additional flooding take place along the river as minor flood stage is expected. When we look at our two day 48 hour rainfall totals, there have been some places that have been in the double digits for rainfall amounts. So this is a pretty significant amount with the rain coming down two to three months worth in some areas in just a couple short days. One of the hardest hit places out in Stevenson County, Pearl City, where they continue to deal with the floodwaters uh, there across many of the streets. That's where we find meteorologist Jordan Wolf out there uh, taking a survey of some of the, the damage and the flooding that has been taking place there in Pearl City. Uh, Jordan, what do you uh, see out there for us this evening? 73 here in Pearl City. We're looking just to the north from Pearl City Road. That's the flooded road that we can see here behind me. There actually have been quite a few residents that have been traveling back and forth between sides of this flooded roadway by boat. They're coming across one way to pick up some groceries, some other necessities, and then they're traveling back across with one very grateful resident being able to bring those people across from one side to the other. We also have one resident earlier with some of the flood waters and the rain that they had gotten over the last couple of days. He told me that his rain gauge had totaled around 14 inches of rain between the previous nights as well as last night's and this morning's rainfall. And we are noticing that this flood water is also coming up still just a little bit as we get here later on into the afternoon, even a little bit higher than what it was just a few hours ago when we arrived. Now we're also noticing on the way here, there were some ditches and some creeks and some other riverways that were also a little bit lower and their flood waters have been knocking over the grass. And that's because a lot of that water has been traveling downstream into this yellow creek. And that's actually what we're seeing here that's over its banks. And as that flood water continues downstream, raises the flood waters here locally, at least here in Pearl City. And eventually that will continue to travel downstream, but it still might be a little bit longer before some of this flood water goes down. We also spoke earlier to one resident who was trying to make as many preparations as he could before the flood waters came. Just a bad feeling. I mean, just watching all the water run in your house, knowing there's nothing you can do about it, and standing back and you know watching your house getting flooded, and there's only so much stuff you can move in a certain amount of time, and knowing there's stuff that you didn't move that you wanted to move.
And so the main takeaway that we want to get from all of this is if you come across a flooded road similar to the one behind me, we want to make sure that you are turning around. Don't try and travel through the flooded roadways because even just a small amount of water can pick up and carry a car. And some of the residents earlier were also noting that those cars were trying to travel and were beginning to move a little bit as they traveled through some of the flooded waters. So make sure you are not traveling through any of these flooded roadways and turn around if you see any road closed signs. For now, I'm reporting live here in Pearl City. You know, I'm Jordan Wolf for your home team. All right, Jordan, thanks for that live report. As you just heard from Candace and Jordan, parts of Stevenson County got nearly a foot of rain in the past 48 hours. Many roads in Freeport were impassable this morning. This is what Crate Park looked like. Temporarily, temporary barricades were up because of fast moving water. The Yellow Creek runs through the park. The main drive and main parking lot are open, but the fire department asks people not to go around any barricades. It's so dangerous. This is what swift water looks like. This is dangerous if you're a person. It's dangerous if you're in a car. This kind of water uh, is, is absolutely what can drown people, uh, whether you are on foot or in a car. The deputy chief did say some cars were stuck in the water this morning. Most people were able to get out on their own. Lightning is likely responsible for an early morning fire at Rockford's oldest Catholic church and for sending three firefighters to the hospital. Fire crews were called to St. James on North 2nd Street just before 8. Flames were shooting from the roof. The Rockford Diocese tells us no one was inside at the time. Three firefighters were hurt in two separate incidents while putting out the fire. They were all taken to the hospital to be checked out. They're expected to be okay. Damages are estimated at $3 million. The church was founded in 1853. And in Ogle County, firefighters say lightning caused the fire at the home of Stillen Valley High School's head football coach. Mike Lawler and his two kids were inside. Lawler believes lightning hit their dog fence and the charge ran into an outlet in their garage starting the fire. High school football practice started this morning. Lawler tells us because of the heavy rain, he was running behind, which is why he was still home. Otherwise, normally I, I probably wouldn't have even been at the house and, you know, the kids might have been here by themselves till they drove up to practice and, and you just start running stuff like that through your head. It is beyond scary what this could have all, what all could have happened this morning. Lawler shut the garage door as soon as he thought something wasn't right. Stillman Valley's fire chief says that quick thinking kept the fire from spreading. They made a really good stop. Uh, the only reason that the, the fire was able to be stopped was because the homeowner when they encountered the heavy black smoke in the garage, they closed the door. It stopped the fire from going anywhere else in the house. It stopped uh, heavy smoke from getting in the rest of the house. And the other thing, he kept the main garage door for the cars closed as well, uh, which kept the fire oxygen limited. Fire damage is limited to the garage and the attic above it. Scott Lever will have more on Coach Lawler and the Cardinals coming up in sports. Rockford Area Police need your help putting suspected criminals behind bars. Here's this week's Crime Stoppers report. 51-year-old Nicholas Parham is 6'1", 220 pounds. He has black hair and brown eyes. Parham is wanted for domestic battery. Hope McManus is 30 years old. She's 5 feet, 140 pounds. She has brown hair and blue eyes. McManus is wanted for criminal trespass. 27-year-old Aaron English is 6'5", 165 pounds. He has black hair and brown eyes. English is wanted for harassment. Jemiah Lucas is 22 years old. She's 5'5", 120 pounds with black hair and brown eyes. Lucas is wanted for aggravated battery. If you have information on any of these suspects, contact Crime Stoppers. You don't have to give your name and you could be eligible for a cash reward. The new Amazon Prime TV series about the Rockford Peaches premieres this week, and there's a new website to brush up on all things Rockford baseball. The Rockford Area Convention and Visitors Bureau created this, GoRockfordPeaches.com. It's a guide for new and old fans to learn all about the historic team. That includes different spots around the city the players would visit, as well as player profiles to learn about the women of baseball. We know that as a new generation of fans discover the Peaches and learn more about their stories, uh, they might want to know more about the city that the Peaches loved and called home. We have a link to the new site on our website, mystateline.com. The new Peaches series debuts Friday. 
We talk pretty regularly about how roughly a third of Rockford's violent crime is related to domestic violence, but it's not just a Rockford problem. One stateline organization in a different county says it struggles with the same statistic in this week's Stateline Strong. Voices is, is, a, is at a, um, a turning point for the organization. Um, this past year we have been presented with um, an influx of need, an uh, influx of need within walk-in services and crisis, with law enforcement and with our local schools. And that's a big job for Voices of Stevenson County. The agency's been around four decades. Voices provides help to survivors of domestic or sexual abuse 24 hours a day, seven days a week. That includes orders of protection, guiding survivors through the court system, group counseling, and prevention. Executive Director Beth Mascal has led the way for the last six years. We see clients of, of all realms, um, you know, all ages, all sexes, all colors, all backgrounds. On average, that's about 650 individuals a year, 500 for domestic violence, 150 for sexual assault or abuse, 30 percent are kids. Children are affected, you know, regardless of their the primary victim or not. Um, and, you know, oftentimes we want to think that the child isn't experiencing it or doesn't understand what's happening. They do. And, you know, that long lasting trauma, you know, resonates and, you know, we see that time and time again. That's led to an increased need in local schools for domestic violence and sexual abuse survivor services. Voices has about 30 staff members, but it relies on volunteers to meet the community's demands. Some of those volunteers help at the Voices Book Nook inside Freeport's Lincoln Mall. Others are part of crisis response teams who meet with survivors at the FHN ER. That's a 24 7 response. And without, you know, our core volunteers that are willing to go in and provide that absolutely necessary service, it would be hard to respond, you know, every day, all the time. Volunteers who have direct contact with clients go through 40 hours of specialized training. This past fall, Voices added an on site emergency shelter. It's important for people to know that. They can present anonymously if they prefer and, and call and seek support. Um, they don't have to disclose, you know, who they may be seeking support against. Um, and they can just kind of run scenarios by us if they want to have that education. Voices is in the middle of its annual half price book sale fundraiser at the Book Nook that runs through this Saturday. If you'd like more information about services, volunteering, or donating, you can find that on the Stateline Strong page of mystateline.com. Now, your first worn weather forecast from Chief Meteorologist Candace King. Well, things are going to be pretty dry, drying out after some of that heavy rainfall we had over the last couple of days. Just to kind of reiterate some of the warnings that we still do have in place. While no severe thunderstorm warnings or flash flood warnings are in effect, now what we turn our attention to some of the local rivers, the Pecatonica River, both in Stevenson and Winnebago counties, already experiencing some flooding there with the pack in Freeport uh, in Stevenson County, as it is actually just right at the top of moderate flood stage. So uh, watching that area pretty closely, flood warnings for the entire uh, length there of the Pecatonica River in Stevenson County. That'll run through Thursday. It's possible we could actually see that warning extended just a bit. If you live along the river, if you know you're in an area that typically floods, there is some flooding that's been ongoing there uh, tied in with some of the rising waters there along the Pecatonica River. You know you got to keep the kind of watch here, especially after some of the heavy rainfall. Another area we have to pay very close attention to. Already we've seen a big jump in the river level uh, along the Pecatonica River here in Sherland. Actually, that reporting station in Sherland experiencing a couple feet rise here just over the last couple of days with the water that continues to run off and then, of course, downstream there. So, a flood warning will go into effect tomorrow morning and that'll actually last, or I should say tomorrow evening, and that'll actually last all the way through uh, early next week as minor flooding is expected. So, another rise of potentially another couple feet expected along the pack, and then eventually that'll work in kind of trickle its way down uh, along the Rock River. So uh, typically with these flash flooding events, heavy rain events, you get the creeks, the streams that uh, tend to overflow their banks. You get runoff then into the farm fields. All of that drains into the creeks. Eventually the creeks go within their banks because then those begin to drain uh, into some of the rivers here. And so within a couple of days, that's when you start to really notice the rise on the river. So we are not out of the woods yet just because that rain has come to an end. Well, we had some pretty significant amount of rainfall come down here 
here. Look at this in Rockford, over six inches. That's our two-day rainfall total. It has been 12 years, so over a decade since we have had this amount of rainfall. Our two-day kind of rain stretch where we've had two inches or more of rain come down back to back. Last time that happened, July 23rd and July 24th of 2010. I'm sure a lot of you remember some of that uh, excessive rainfall we had back then. And then, of course, we had some pretty significant rainfall back in 2017 as well. Why we had so much rain these last couple of days, just an unseasonably kind of tropical air mass uh, here through the weekend. You felt it with those dew point temperatures. Stationary boundary up to the north, low level jet kicking up both Saturday night and Sunday night, allowing these thunderstorms to really kind of train. So move over the same area over and over and over again. And then all that moisture we had in the atmosphere, those thunderstorms tapped into that and it just downpoured. And that's where we had those rainfall rates of over two inches per hour in some spots. Things are pretty quiet out there. Noticing though the river going up on our SkyTrack camera here uh, brought to us by Window World. As I mentioned, our skies, they will continue to clear as high pressure builds in for us here as we go through this evening. So that is some good news. Watch for some fog though, as we go through the night tonight, just with some residual low-level moisture. So we see partly cloudy skies for tomorrow afternoon. Temperatures tonight will drop down to about 60 degrees. Tomorrow we should make it into the upper 70s. Low 80s here for the time we get into Wednesday. Good news, guys, we dry out. Yeah, we've got maybe a small rain chance coming in Wednesday, Thursday with another cold front. Gets a little windy on Thursday afternoon, but not expecting any significant rainfall like what we had here just these last couple of days. Well, high school football players have been waiting for this day to arrive. The first day of practice is leading up to the season. Unfortunately, the weather didn't cooperate, so teams that practiced this morning were forced indoors into gymnasiums. This is Stillman Valley's practice. The Cardinals made the most of the situation. Senior fullback Jory Spain says he and his teammates couldn't wait to get going. Man, last night it was hard to sleep because I was actually anxious and excited to be here. So I think it's going to be a good season. Having everyone back here is just a good feeling. Now, tomorrow we're going to begin our high school football two-a-day previews. At 6 o'clock, we'll get our first look at the defending eight-man state champion, Polo Marcos. And 9 and 10 will feature Stillman Valley. On the Bears to the day off, they're going to hold their family fest tomorrow morning at Soldier Field. And no surprise here, Matt LaFleur says uh, Jordan Love is going to be the Packers' starting quarterback Friday night when they play their first preseason game at San Francisco. Aaron Rodgers isn't likely to play at all in the preseason unless it's for a few snaps in their final preseason game. In college football, Alabama's the team to beat this year, according to the coaches. They're a solid number one in the first coaches poll, with 54 of these 65 first place votes. Ohio State is second. The Buckeyes got five first place votes. Defending champion Georgia got six first place votes, but fewer overall points than the Buckeyes. Clemson is fourth, and Notre Dame fifth. Michigan is sixth. The White Sox are off tonight. They'll play two tomorrow in Kansas City. Cubs will host the Nationals tonight. The Nationals have thrown up the white flag on their season with a recent trade of Juan Soto. What do you think of these Cubs threads? This is the uniform the Cubs will be wearing Thursday when they play in the Field of Dreams game in Iowa. Cream colored with the logo of a bearer holding a bat inside the sea. That's the style the Cubs wore in the late 1920s. The Reds uniforms a throwback to 1914. White with pinstripes and a wishbone C. Even their cap has pinstripes. Again, that Field of Dreams game will be played Thursday night in Dyersville, Iowa. I spent some time in Dyersville Saturday getting a feel for that little community and the impact that the movie and these MLB games there have made on it. I'll bring you my tour of Dyersville tonight on WTVO here at 10 o'clock. Our whole area could really use some dry time, but especially for the folks over in Stevenson County. Yeah, you know, when you talk about rainfall totals, you know, over two days that are in the double digits, you know that that's a, a pretty significant amount. And that's not to downplay some of the rain that other areas have uh, experienced, too. I know parts of Ogle County had some pretty uh, big flooding in some spots, you know, with uh, some of the creeks and streams down there. Uh, some of that water beginning to recede, too. But, yeah, we really need things to dry out. And the good news for us, we are going to get that. But in some places, it may get worse before it actually gets better, just with how things Things drain from a lot of the runoff from uh, the rainfall here. So we've got some dry time and temperatures, guys, are going to be pretty comfortable through the weekend. Thanks, Candace. And thanks so much for joining us. Have a good evening. Stay safe.